And we're back with our coverage of the Georgia runoff election. We're going to continue our conversation with our great guests who have spent the last four or so hours <laughs> hanging out with us. And, you know, look, we've covered a lot of ground tonight. Uh, we've learned a lot of things about Georgia and one particular race. We've learned some things uh, about the state of the country, what may happen next. But I'm, I'm interested in kind of your, your final big picture takeaways or things you think we should underscore as the night wraps up, April. Something that I have not really completely talked about tonight, but a large swath of black Georgians, particularly black Americans, felt that Herschel Walker was just completely unqualified. And in Georgia tonight, or a couple hours ago, you had two black men face off against one another. And looking at the construct of where everything laid for these candidates, you have Atlanta and then the rest of Georgia. And I think about places like Forsyth County that we talked about earlier. You know, in the 1980s, Forsyth County had no blacks there. They voted uh, for Herschel Walker. Glenn County that we just heard about with Ahmaud Arbery and the, the trial there um, after the, the lynching of Ahmaud Arbery, they voted for Herschel Walker. What does this say? Georgia and this nation still has to come to grips with matters of race. And the Republican Party put a black man in a space to bring black males to the party. But was it the right candidate? Black America said no. And very interesting. Laura, what final thoughts? I think when we look at Georgia, plus the way a lot of the other swing states went this cycle, uh, there was a lot of questions about whether or not Democrats' final message around democracy and voting rights and abortion was actually going to be helpful for them, especially in these competitive statewide races. And I think that it proved that those two things were things that voters talked about repeatedly and things that worked for Democrats. I mean, Warnock, I just can't stress it enough, repeatedly was constantly talking about the fact that Republicans in the state of Georgia were trying to make it so voters could not cast a vote on Saturday, on the weekend, and saying that they were trying to take that ability away from you and that they were trying to restrict the vote in other ways. And it seems to have definitely helped him uh, tonight. Yeah, no, I think it's a really good point. Final thoughts, Alice. I think there's no more appropriate place than the state of Georgia for people to recognize the fact that Trumpism has gone with the wind. General election voters are tired of conspiracy theorists, of election deniers, people that are more focused on past grievances than their, their personal future of the voters. And what we're going to see, if, if Trump's base and the people that really support Trump really want to exert their influence and show their strength and protect his legacy, they will rally together, line up behind another candidate that is going to focus on the policies that help the future of this country as opposed to someone's personal past grievances. Yeah, we'll see if it happens. Very interesting point. I like, you're, you're very sharp with Gone with the Wind at 3.45 a.m. It's close time. <laughs> we got a final thought. I, I want to pick up on the thread that Laura mentioned about abortion. The Dobbs case, we have not, I don't think I've talked about enough. It was catalyzing. Okay, when Democrats, uh, President Biden, Reverend Warnock, they talk about extremism. You know, we've tried that in the past, and sometimes voters go, ah, you, you, you're hyping. You're... Dobbs made it real. And, and this is not an opinion that will age well with voters, because it's going to continue to affect people in their lives every single day. And so uh, it, for, for my great admiration for Reverend Warnock, we've discussed uh, Mr. Walker's shortcomings and, and Mr. Trump. Democrats should send a fruit basket to Sam Alito. <laughs> because that associate justice, in his opinion, probably delivered the Senate and probably saved a dozen or two dozen House members. And it, it won't stop. This will, is not an opinion that will age well. When Democrats say Republicans are extreme, now they have living proof. Mm. Look at Justice Alito's opinion in the Dobbs case. Look at what your sisters and sons and daughters and friends are going through. Uh, and by the way, this is delivering young men as well as women to the Democratic yeah, Party. I mean, the, the way that opinion was written was basically the most extreme version of what it, what it could have been, and I think there was a significant reaction. The one thing I will say as we wrap up, and we've touched on this a couple, thing, a couple times tonight, but I hope that one of the things that many of the people I've covered for many years here in Washington take away from this race is that character still matters in politics. It should have always mattered, and anyone that makes excuses for people who uh, show us who they are repeatedly. Uh, we fail to believe them and we send them into public life anyway. I think voters have shown us tonight that, you know what, we should be paying closer attention to making sure that the people that we bring here to make decisions on behalf of all of us are the m most upstanding and best among us. 
not the worst. Paul Begal, Alice Stewart, Laura Barone Lopez, April Ryan, thank you all for hanging out with us for so many hours tonight. And most of all, thanks to all of you for joining us for this special coverage of the Georgia runoff election. I am Casey Hunt in Washington. I'll be signing off for the night, but don't go anywhere. Stay with CNN. You'll have your top international headlines ahead and much more coverage of the Georgia runoff after the break.